Hey folks, it's your pal Mike Shea from SlyFlourish.com and Twitter.com slash SlyFlourish here with a special episode of Sly Flourish's Lazy DM Prep. Typically this show is Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and we will be having a show tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so there's going to be two shows this weekend. But this show is a special one-off show that I am shooting specifically to talk about homebrew, preparing for homebrew adventures because I am, in fact, preparing for a homebrew adventure that I hope to be running today. About f two minutes before I was about to go on, I got a text from one of the people that said they were out. I already had two other people out, so I have three players out, which means we have potentially three players coming, which is just barely enough, but we'll see. So hopefully we're having a game. If, we, if, if we're not, then, hey, whatever. I've prepared for a game that I can use another time. Uh, I had a, this, this show, by the way, is brought to you by the fine backers of Sly Flourish at Patreon. If you go to patreon.com slash Sly Flourish, you can help back shows like this and help uh, the Sly Flourish empire uh, keep on, keep, keep on running. Uh, so I had a comment from somebody who said, hey, I liked, uh, I like your shows, but you're always talking about published adventures. What would it be like to do the lazy DM steps for a homebrew adventure? And I said, the next time I do a homebrew adventure... Sorry, the cats are jumping all over the place. The next time I do... My camera's off too. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Uh, the next time I do a homebrew adventure, I will pop onto the stream and record an episode where we build a homebrew adventure. And that is what we are going to do today. Uh, I have the chat open and it looks like Step Back History. Step Back History says, I'm a home brewer, so this is good to see. Probably... The big thing about preparing for a homebrew adventure is that, and, and the eight steps uh, of Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master, uh, expect that you are building from scratch. They do not assume that you are, I'm going down the checklist. Here they are. Uh, they do not expect that you are uh, running a published adventure because the published adventure ends up um, filling a lot of these steps for you. But when you are preparing a homebrew adventure, you probably want to go through all of the steps here. And that is what we're going to do today. There's going to be a little less general D&D chatter and a little bit more about talking about the adventure. Uh, I have done very little... Sorry, it's hot again in my basement again. Um, I have done very little preparation ahead of time. I thought about it. I thought about what I was going to run. I got some ideas. I kind of filled my head with stuff to think about it. But um, I didn't sit down. I barely wrote down anything. You'll see, you'll see the notes that I've written down so far. The things that I did do is I, I thought about it on a couple of walks and thought about like, well, what would the adventure be like? And I thought like, eh, I've got a couple interesting scenes I like. And I did because uh, I am setting mine. So it's not in a homebrew world. Although, really, it doesn't matter too much. I am running it in Margreve, which is inside um, Midgard, the Kobold Press setting. So I am setting it in there. So I have a little bit of things. But really, that doesn't give me very much as far as an adventure goes. Uh, so, But what I did do is I went through the Creature Codex and the Tome of Beasts to try to find creatures that I thought would be interesting for this adventure. And I wrote a bunch of them down. But... Besides that, and I also built a little bit of a Dwarven Forge thing, but that's kind of a separate thing anyway. And I didn't finish. I was almost late for the show. I was late for the show because I was busy working on my Dwarven Forge setup for it. Because I got some new Dwarven Forge pieces that I want to use. Um, okay, so I've got three players coming today. So that'll be fun. We'll do, a, we'll do a smaller adventure then. And we will keep an eye. That, that, will, that will keep us honest when we are looking at things like what monsters we're going to run. All right, so uh, let's jump right over to the notes. Uh, I want to run a Halloween adventure, and I wanted, normally I run Ravenloft, but today I'm going to run, uh, we, we were going to make it as part of our regular Margreve game, but only two of the three players will be from Margreve, so. Um, Step Back History says, combat needs to be smaller, and the plot will make it move faster. That's right, so I, I kind of need to prepare a little bit more, but we'll see. If it also goes short, it goes short. That's okay. I don't really mind. Nobody's driving from a, a million miles away. Uh... So, the uh, story of today's adventure is that it's set in Castle Shadowcrag. That's actually Castle Naratar in the picture. I couldn't find an interesting picture. Let's, let's, let's do the Googles and see if we can... Oh, that's my Gmail. Don't look at that. Um, is there an image of Castle Shadowcrag? 
I don't see a shadow crack. Ooh, look at that. That's grim. There's a picture of Wolfgang Bauer. I don't see any pictures of Castle Shadowcrag itself, which is a bummer. There is a Return to Castle Shadowcrag adventure, but it's uh, only in print, and it costs like hundreds of dollars, so I'm not, I'm not buying that. So there's a picture of a castle. Um, okay, so the adventure is set in sh Shadow Cast Shadow Castle Shadow Shadow Castle Crag, Castle Shadow Crag, and um, my main and I want to kind of keep it Halloween themed. So I think we're gonna go with um, and and you know well yeah we'll we'll go in the strong start but let's talk quickly about characters. So I only have two of the three characters today because Hiccup is not going to be there. Uh, so I have Crawl, a Minotaur cleric who's very clean and put together and believes in justice above all, and Alda Swift Branch, a bear folk ranger. Uh, we're going to have a third character as well, but that's uh, my friend who uh, has not played in uh, uh, who not, has not played in this adventure before. Uh, so I don't know who he's going to play. Um, so I have the three characters, and uh, I don't know that their backgrounds are going to tie too much into the adventure itself so um we don't know what we're doing there so when we're talking about a homebrew adventure uh really my belief is and we're going to see how that works today is that you can still start with the eight steps the eight steps well the eight steps are like the steps that we sit down and we think okay am i going to go through and make a game what am i going to do let's go through the eight steps it gives a nice framework for people not everybody chooses to use it which is great and people like the certain ones that they, they like to focus on um, but it always gives us a good place to start and you can start it about anywhere. So in, in return of the lazy dungeon master, I talk about the fact that like, if you're thinking about your game, you know, when you're just wandering around or you're bored at a meeting, you're stuck in traffic or whatever. Um, if you just want to kind of ponder your game and you kind of don't, if your mind is just sort of wandering all over the place, you can think through the eight steps. Like where's the next game going to start or what secrets and clues do I have or what interesting locations can I put in place? So you can still use the eight steps even to just ponder your game. It's a, it's a framework we can use for all parts of our game. And if you're homebrewing, it's great to go. And when people say like, oh, well, what about world building? Don't you want to spend a lot of time world building? It's like, not really. Like your world building can actually be adventure building, which is actually your next adventure. Like let the world build itself as you go, right? And I know other people tend to disagree with that. And that's fine. There's, I mean, not, you know, I don't get hate mail or anything like that. But, um... But yeah, so so uh, so we're gonna go. So where do we start? I've I've thought about the strong start of this game a few times, and I have. Oh, I do need. Um, let me see. There's there's something I wanted to pull up. Uh, um, Dungeons, D and D, Five E Material, Cobalt Press. Cobalt Press gets their own special folder. They have so much stuff. Uh, so we are gonna drop the Creature Codex. In here, whoop, that's not the creature codex. That's the creature codex, and we need the Toma Beasts. Toma Beasts. I wanted to make sure I've got both of these books handy uh, so that we can look up certain monsters. So uh, one of them, and I can't remember which book is. Uh, yeah, I don't know why this thing is the way it is. It's because the first page is a is monster. So we have, uh, I knew that, my, my first thought was like, what if they're being pursued through the, um, what if they're being pursued? So the, the, the start of the adventure is that the characters, by uh, Sister Permafrost, the frost hag and her wolves. And she has a bunch of wolves. And two winter wolves. Now, obviously, let's take a look at a winter wolf. Um, winter wolves are badass, 75 hit points. They breathe for 18 points of damage. Right, so winter wolves are really rough. So when the characters see this, like the idea is, okay, they've they've actually been split up from the rest of their party, and um, they are being pursued by these packs of wolves, and they hear their friends fighting other packs, but they're running from them because they said there's like, you know, 
a dozen wolves plus a winter wolf plus a frost hag that are chasing him. And they get to the door. They can fight some wolves. So we'll have them fight. Oh, so let's let's take a look at the encounter balance here. So, so one of the things about um, playing for three people is that we don't have... Um, we don't have uh, a lot that 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 is a that's much many fewer characters than the game sort of expects. So we're gonna go and look at encounter building. So here's my quick encounter building. And these characters are second to fourth level. So if we have one monster per character, the CR of the monster should be one quarter, and it should be one tenth if um, uh, if there are two monsters per character. So uh two i think wolves are cr regular wolves uh what am i doing wolf uh a wolf i think is a cr quarter yeah so it's a cr quarter so it's actually not it's not even a tenth right because a tenth a cr quarter would be a tenth of a fourth level character and they're third so uh one wolf two wolves per character would be too many um, so we're going to do four wolves, right? So instead of six wolves, we'll do four wolves. And then in another wave, a winter wolf joins in. Um, and I need a name uh, for the winter wolf. Um, who has a good name? Let's, let's crowdsource this. I need a good name, uh, for a winter wolf. Um, uh, uh, I need a good name for a winter wolf that goes along. Frostmane, there you go. Frostmane, thank you, Evil John. And I need another one. Uh, but I don't want to go Fen. Uh, you know, Step of History. I love you, but but Fenris. I don't. It's too too close to the mythology, um, and I sometimes I like to just stay out of the out of the mythology. Isn't Fen Fenris? Isn't Fenrir? Is the wolf from um, Norse Norse mythology? So um, this will give them a chance to fight. Then they'll see that another winter wolf. Um, Sister Permafrost, another Winter Wolf, Sister Permafrost, and six more wolves still pursue. The characters get to the door of Castle Shadowcrag, Uh, and this is where we have where, um, what is he known as? The Guardian. Uh, he is a, so the Guardian is a Shadow Fae. Um, it's not there. Uh, we gotta go down to Elf. Da, da, da. A lot of demons. Oop, I think I just passed them. That's a dampier. These books have so many. It might not be in this one. It might be in the other one. So that's the problem with the Tome Beast and the Creature Codex is I never know which one I'm looking for. Uh, elf. Here we go. So we have regular Shadow Fae, which have 31 hit point. They're pretty tough. But uh, this guy, the Guardian, challenge rating four. 110 hit points. Hits like a freight train. Um, the Guardian stops the... Um, uh, where the Guardian stops per Sister Permafrost. The Guardian's name, I need a cool name. Uh, oh, come on. It's there. I know it's there. 
Why? Uh, right here. Random names. Uh, we need a cool grave bond. How's that for a name? Grave bond. The guardian stops sister permafrost, says something to her in ancient shadow elven. And she scowls at him and turns around with her wolves and leaves. And then he, maybe it's Grave Bond, and we'll have another guy too. Um, uh, Grave Bond and uh, Dusk Whisper. Grave uh, Dusk Whisper. And And Dusk Whisper invites the adventurers into Castle Shadowcrag. So uh, let me give you, so there's a strong start. Um, let me give you guys the general thought about this adventure. The idea of this adventure is that the characters are uh, driven to Castle Shadowcrag. They are invited in there by the last remaining heir of Castle Shadowcrag, who is a young human boy. He's like 12 or 13 years old. And everybody else around him are a bunch of Shadow Fae servants who are sworn to his bloodline. They are his servants, but his family was murdered by the free city of Zobek. They were the ones executed, uh, the royalty that was executed by the free city of Zobek. And he is the last remaining heir, and he is by himself in this castle. He has a caretaker, he has a couple of guardians, and he has a staff of Shadow Fae who uh, take care of him. And all he really, he's, he's kind of morose and sad and lonely, but uh, also kind of driven by this. He knows about his royal bloodline and he knows what he is. And the dark secret of the castle is that they often invite adventurers to come and stay at the castle. And then a being uh, underneath the castle, a former vampire who used to rule this castle, feeds off of their souls and off of their bodies and gets more powerful. And in return for feeding, he is a uh, shadow fey vampire. And the stronger he gets, the more likely they are to break the bonds of a doorway that exists underneath the castle that leads to the Shadow Fae so that these bound, uh, these bound Shadow Fae can return home. So their goal is to, and they've drained other adventurers too. There's, there's other ones that have come here before and not, not returned. Um, so the, the goal of the Shadow Fae is get them into the castle, wind them and dine them, then in the night grab them, drag them down into the, 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 the caves beneath the castle, uh, sacrifice them to their, their, the, what remains of their vampiric lord, and then uh, eventually when they do this enough times, the doors will open and, and, the, and the doors will open and they can escape their bonds and return to the Shadow Fae. That is my general thought about the adventure. Um, and, and that's sort of the situation that exists. Now, how the characters decide to interact with that situation is kind of up to them. Uh, but the general scenes I see are... Um, uh, Pursuit by Sister Permafrost to uh, Lord... So, Lord... Uh, we need a name for him. Uh, Dominin? Dominin? Or Domin. Uh, and what is the uh, we're just gonna come up with a name. Um Song of let's hit reload in this. Domin Northman. North North something. Northwalker, good enough. Lord Domin Northwalker, current heir, current heir to Shadowcrag. Uh,
And the vampire is named what? We need a cool vampire name. Um, oh, cool vampire name, Fairy Soother. That's kind of an interesting name. Um, Tim, no. Zarvin. Nightblood. That's pretty cliche. Um, so there is a creature. I'm just thinking about kind of creatures, especially when I got three characters. Is there a vampiric mist? There is a vampiric mist. What CR is that? Hey, look, challenge three. That's pretty great. So we're going to add that vampiric mist. I, there is a thing called a crimson mist in one of the other books. Um... Um, uh, there is a, uh, I can't spell. So there's a crimson mist that's way harder, uh, in, um, uh, there's a vampiric, yeah, vampiric thing that's way harder in, I think it's in the creature codex, but a CR3 is perfect for this. So I like that really well. Uh, so secrets and clues. So we've got our start. We have our scenes. We need our secrets and clues. We're just ripping right through the time on here. So uh, let's see. We've got Damon's parents were executed by the free city of Zobek during the rebellion. The other lords turned away from the North Walkers. Uh, they, the other lords turned away from the North, walk, North Walkers to save their own necks. I don't know about North Walkers. I might change that name. It's, it, ain't, it ain't sticking with me. The North Walkers had a bond to a band of Shadow Fae. Uh, Shadow Crag was once the lair of a powerful vampire named Zarvin Nightblood. That was slain by a group of adventurers centuries ago. Since the time of Zarvan, Shadow Craig has always been stuck in eternal night ever since the time of Zarvan. Zarvan had a crypt deep beneath the castle. It was sealed up centuries ago. Adventurers gone missing after visiting. After visiting Castle Shadow Crag. Uh, what else? So th this is where we like we hit our seven, and then we're like, now we actually have to think of some secrets. No, they can't just they don't just they don't just pour forth from us. Uh, what other interesting secrets could we bring about uh, here? Oh, that shadow crag said to sit atop a gateway to the shadow fell. Is it the shadow fell? What is it in uh, anybody anybody in the chat who is familiar with Midgard? What is their version of the shadow fell? Where did the shadow fay come from? Uh, what else do we have? 
Vampire Secret Tunnels. So there's a couple of tricky bits. But um, I guess while I'm thinking of these last two, I've got two, two more secrets to go. Uh, and a couple of the tricky bits are like how... You know, how will the party deal with the fact... I guess, like, the characters are going to know they're going to get ambushed. They, like, know that this is going to go bad. So they're probably a little bit more prepared than the other ones. I don't think the Shadow Fae have to be particularly smart. They're mostly arrogant. Um, but why would the... So so the ambush could just go... Could go, could go poorly for them. Um... Uh, I think one thing that could happen is the Shadow Fae could, um, the Shadow Fae could, uh, use the boy and say, like, we're going to kill him. If we don't sacrifice you, we're sacrificing him down below. And then the party's like, are we really going to let him sacrifice that Lord? And then it turns out like the Lord isn't going to be sacrificed. They're like, no, we're never, we can't really kill him. It's sort of a ruse. So what stops the characters from like, well, we'll just leave. I guess they have a wolf, the wolves and the, um, the wolves and the hagger outside the shadow realm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Tricky DM 61. I hope you're not tricking me there. <sighs> two more secrets. What are two more interesting things that characters can learn uh, about this? the something about the old history of the place um let's see previous previous errors did i edit the wrong line oh yeah i did you're right thank you eh, eh. You were correct. A lot of shadows in this. Previous errors were both. Some were quite benevolent. Some were torturous and awful. Ghosts of previous still haunt. That could be fun. Now we got some NPCs. Okay, uh, so we've got our secrets and clues. We've got a strong start. We've got some scenes. We've got secrets and clues. Now we need some fantastic locations. So we're going to go with, um, let's see, we'll do some markdown here. So the way we do, let's see, uh, it's a four hour game. We're gonna do eight locations. These are big locations. Uh, and I already have two to get me started. So the shadow doors, vampiric pool, iron, uh, cold iron doors. Green glowing orbs. Uh, that's the shadow gate, uh, the hall of ghouls. Uh, slime, slime covered walls, spiky stalagmates. Slime covered walls, spiky, spiky stalagmites, uh, and what else? Oh, ancient. Ancient shadow fey etchings. These are, I'm starting with the dungeon and working my way up. Uh, blood fountain. So, uh, yeah, I, I actually have a, um, uh, so Phil Gra says, can you give me a short description of what it's going to be about? Yeah, I'll give it again real quickly. So characters get thrown to, uh, the characters get routed to Castle Shattercrag. There they are welcomed by the current Lord of Castle Shattercrag, who's like a 13 year old boy and his shadow face servants. 
Uh, they are treated well, but then in the night they are ambushed because they are supposed to be sacrificed to a being down below in the castle. Uh, they probably have the night to sort of explore the castle, and it turns out that the uh, boy and the Shadow Fae uh, regularly sacrifice adventures to a vampiric mist that lives below the castle that they're trying to power up so that the vampire can open the doorways to get to the Shadowfell. That is that is the description. So, um, yeah, the adventure is they go to the castle, they meet the people, they get jumped, uh, they explore the castle a little bit, they go down to the cellars, and they face off against the vampiric mist. Uh, so that's how we're going to that's how we're going to go. Uh, the cellars, dank, dank cellars, old, uh, old iron maidens. Um, Uh, Shadow Realm Stone. Nah, old Iron Maidens. What else would you have in a terrible cellar? Oh, the dungeons. Uh, hideous sewer. Hideous sewer grate. Um, what else? There's some fun things for a dungeon. Um, stretchers, yeah, racks, yeah, but what would a, uh, skulls, screaming skulls? Yeah, the secret, uh, oh yeah, we can have an armory, right, secret armory. Former wares of dozens. of dozens of adventurers. So I'm gonna cheat. Normally you come up with like three, uh, let's see, coat of arms. So normally you come up with three interesting things about each location. This is something you guys don't, if you if you watch this show regularly, uh, this is something you don't regularly see me do because usually I have all the fantastic locations set up for me when I'm running when I'm running a published adventure. Um, yeah, so those are some good things down below. Then um, let's have a dining hall. Heads of various. Beasts, Griffin, Owlbear, Direwolf. What other interesting troll head? How about a troll head that talks? Uh, oh, a Chimera, that'd be great. All three heads of a chimera. Uh, what is a candelabra? What's the big uh, chandelier? Vast chandelier. Anything else in the dining hall? Ancient wood table. Not of this world. Uh, let's have a gallery. Uh Throne made of bones. I don't know who would have that. Um, uh, yeah, so what are the other interesting rooms? There's a gallery. There could be... Uh, uh, who's the Lord? Domins. Right, he has a playroom. He kind of regresses because he just, he's probably hasn't really, you know, been raised. He has this like air of nobility on the front, but he's really a child underneath. 
So he has uh, a room that actually is um, well lit. We can make it creepy in that he has a stuffed grandmother in his toy room that he talks to, and the ghost is actually there and speaks. That's a good Halloween thing. Uh, all right, I need one more interesting location. Um, where do the Shadow Fae stay? Do they have quarters, and what are their quarters like? If you were a Shadow Fae, you would trance, right? They do, they do the trancing, so they don't... Um, yeah, so let's have the... Um, floating geode of Shadow Realm stone. Um, Yeah, how about mushrooms, right? Can't spell. So they, they live off these these shadow fell mushrooms. Uh, glowing green orbs. Violet. Soft mark incense. Oh, powerful incense. All right, so I've got eight interesting places for them to explore, I think, and then they will have other rooms uh, as well. Uh, if we need a map for this place, I was going to go steal a map from Dyson Logos. Uh, Dyson Logos, maps, all maps. So here is all of Dyson Logo's maps. I saw one the other day. Let's see if we can find another one. I'm looking for like a generic castle map that looks cool. If you ever need a map for pretty much anything, go to Dyson Logo's because and, and go to his maps. I don't know how many maps there are in here. There are hundreds of maps available and done by the current uh, cartographer for Wizards of the Coast. So the fact that he has, see this, um, uh, Baron Vale Castle. Where is it? There it is. This one's, it's a little small, right? I don't know if we want Castle Shadowcrag to be this small. It's a little too small. I mean, it's got all the right stuff. So we'll, we'll keep that one, we'll keep that one in our, in our thoughts. Give that one some thoughts and prayers. Uh, but probably Castle Shadowcrag is supposed to be like a great big castle. So uh, here's an interesting, that's seven spires. Yeah, that's, I don't know, that's all too big. Look at him with Minecraft maps. Tons and tons of free maps. Just, oh, look at this one. White Crag Fortress. White Crag, huh? White Crag Shadowcrag? <laughs> I think this is the one I was looking at. This is the one I was looking at before. Oh, 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 I did something bad. It is so big. This is a big map. So this looks perfect, right? It's got a secret basement. It's got dungeons. Uh, it's got upper floors. We just kind of decide what's where, you know, and that sections of it are. And maybe like the, the this whole tower on the far right, that could be where the Shadow Fae hang out. Uh, and then these could be our rooms. This is This works really well. I like it. 
And it's even got the cave complex. We might skip this middle dungeon and go right to the secret basement down here. I think that could I think that could work pretty well. So yeah, we got ourselves a map. So let's just grab that and stick that in our fantastic locations. Um, uh, so there we go. It's an interesting thing. I was thinking about miniatures the other day and that like a lot of people are custom printing miniatures from like Hero Forge and whatnot. But between, if you look at all of the ones coming out of WizKids, the, the Nolzer's Magnificent Minis, and they have a Pathfinder line as well. And then if you look at all the stuff coming out of, um, uh, who's it? Um, the other miniature place that makes that, Reaper. You get, I mean, they, they have everything. Like there's not, you're not coming up with any hero that they, they haven't made a miniature of, right? And you can just go get it and paint it. And you can paint it anything you want. So you're really just looking at whether the model fits or not. Um, the site again with the map is, uh, Dyson logos. I will paste it in here. There you go. And it's just got oodles, oodles of maps. Like, look at this. It's like, ah, oh, maps. Look at all of my, oh my God. There, how many are there? Holy cow, Dyson. Now I got to find out. Let's view source on this. View page source. Here's a dirty trick on how to count things. Uh, I do a lot of page scraping in my spare time. Those are all comments. I think there's 600 maps here. About 600 maps. No, maybe even more. I'm looking for a piece of text that is likely, um, let's go for rel attachment. Uh, sorry, so there's about 370, looks like about 370 maps on here, uh, if I am counting the right thing. Uh, that is a lot of maps. Lots and lots of maps. And they go back, I mean, years. He's been doing this for years. Oh, the top right page says so many. Oh, my God. There you go. That's better than me scraping the page. 755 maps. <laughs> 755. You don't need to draw any maps anymore. If you're drawing maps, I do, I do scrape pages for fun. Um, if you're drawing maps and you like it, go with God. If you, however, draw maps because you feel like you have to, you don't have to. There's 755 maps done by Dyson. Pretty much everything. I think he's done pretty much everything. Okay, uh, we need some NPCs. This is important. So we have um, Domin, right? Uh, Lord Domin Northwalker. Uh, we have the Guardian. What's his name? Um, Grave Bond and Dusk Whisper. Uh, and he, Dusk Whisper is the, um, uh, Dusk Whisper is the, what do they call it? Uh, the Castilian. That's not the right name for it, but he's sort of the, the keeper of the place, right? Keep, he makes, he's like the one that makes sure everything is running smooth in the castle. Um, we have the Caretaker. Uh, Alette. Starshine. Let's Starshine. We have um, Zavrim. What is it? Zarvin. Uh, we have probably. 
Uh, Isadel. Isadel Northrocker. She's the grandmother of Damon. Uh, are there any other NPCs we need? Um, oh, I wanted to add a, uh, f uh, a fawn who's sort of like a... Uh, Barry. Uh, a fawn servant that uh, doesn't, you know, has. Who has fey blood in her? So that is pretty good. Uh, monsters, we have um, shadow fey. We have shadow fey duelist. Shadow fey guardian. Uh, Shadow Fate Ghouls. They guard the basement. Uh, Vampiric Mist. Uh, I'm going to be lazy because why not stay on brand? And let's look at Drow. Um, what level is a Drow Arachnomancer? Oh, 13th. No, that ain't going to work. That's too powerful. Drow Mage is seventh, still pretty powerful. I think we're just gonna go with a um, good old cult fanatic. I use cult fanatics all the time. Cultists and cult fanatics are like my favorite monsters. Uh, oh, we also have the Snow Hag. Uh, we have a Winter Wolf, and we have regular wolves. Um, anything else? Skeleton. You can always put skeletons. Former adventurer skeletons, right? So that's pretty good. Uh, treasure. We definitely want to have a few pieces of interesting treasure. So let's take a look uh, at the Lazy DM workbook here. Go to my treasure, random tables. We're gonna do some relics. Um, oh, so I think one of them, like I think we were trying to figure out, yeah, let's look at the secret armory. Let's put an interesting monument. Let's roll on a monument uh, here in the, um, that's being kept inside of the armory. It is a elven, of course. Uh, Vine-covered elven, uh, fearful, and then I need to be 100. Fearful, vine-covered, 67. Uh, 67. Orb. Oh, I even have a little thing for that. So there is a elven fearful. Let's see. Where did I go? Secret armory. Elven vine covered fearful orb is sitting there. Uh, I even have a really cool bit of dwarven forge I can use for that. Uh, so that is a cool one. Um, we could put, let's put something interesting in the gallery too. There is a uh, divine uh, 18, an ancient divine, another 18, sleep inducing. Oh, perfect, right? A sleep inducing. 76 um, machine no uh, we will do a uh, astrolabe um, Yeah, 
Ancient divine sleep inducing astrolabe. Um, is in the gallery. Okay, but I need treasure, and I've got three minutes to do treasure. We'll probably go a little longer because I started a little late. So we're gonna have. I'm gonna give myself a few more minutes. I got time. The game's not until one. So, but I do want to build some dwarven forge for it because I like dwarven forge, and I've got friends coming, and why not have them give them some dwarven forge? Um, so let's have a weapon. Uh, we will have a short bow. That's a good one. Uh, and it is a. 16, an ethereal, wow, uh, 19, a shining ethereal short bow. Uh, and it does, uh, so when we think about that cast true strike, So there we go. An ethereal shortbow that casts true strike. Um, and that it can do true strike at will. It can do it all the time because true strike's a cantrip. So it doesn't, I think true, yeah, right? True strike's a cantrip. Pretty sure. Cantrip, one round, concentration, lasts for one round. You point a finger in the target of the range, your magic grants you a brief insight in the target's defenses. On your next turn, you gain advantage on your first attack roll against the target, provided the spell hasn't ended. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty powerful. That's a good one. Uh, should I make it a plus one as well? I don't know. And let's stick a suit of armor in there. Uh, I kind of like not, but everybody likes plus one, so we'll make it a plus one. I don't know how I feel about, I know that the math is flat, but I don't know how I feel about magic weapons that are powerful but don't have any plus bonuses, like the flame tongue sword, right? Like the players are not nearly as excited about the flame tongue now as they were about the flame tongue before because it doesn't have a plus bonus on it. They're always like dis surprisingly disappointed when they find out that they have a weapon. Because if like they're giving up like a plus one sword for a flame tongue sword, like I know it does more damage, but my attack roll just went down. Well, then they have that's how flat math works. So I don't know. Uh, armor. We have three. No, we're not going to do hide. Studded leather it is. Uh, and studded leather is nice because it can be used by many. Um, it can be used by anybody. And it is what kind of studded leather? Uh, 14. Dark Elven Studded Leather. In fact, it would be Shadow Fae. Why, is it, why aren't they wearing it then? Eh, who knows? Uh, what condition is it in? 16. It's oily. Um, oily shadow face studded leather. So it's like a slick suit. Uh, does it have a spell effect? Let's just take a look at what kind of spell it might be on there. 16. Flicked wounds. No. Shield of faith? Yeah, that's not, doesn't really fit it. Blindness and deafness. Uh, silence. Um... I mean, silence is like thieves... Uh, how about that does Misty Step? Uh, does it give advantage on escape checks? Sure, right? Why not? Because it's oily. So now we have two powerful ones. Let's throw a big, powerful relic in here, too. So... This could be a relic that they find. It is a, we already got ethereal, let's roll again. Uh, a goblinoid, um, pulsing goblinoid. Uh, a 
Pulsing Goblinoid 86. Statue. That's gross. Like, how about we'll go with living? Uh, and we're going to go with something powerful on the other. Stinking Cloud. Stinking Cloud is pretty great. Um, yeah. Living Goblinoid Statue of the Cast Stinking Cloud once. So now we have three good magic items as well uh, as... Uh, and maybe that oil, oily shadow fey studded leather that lets the misty step, maybe that is being worn by the duelist. Um, so uh, that's pretty good. So uh, yeah, so it was about an hour, but that also includes my chatty, my chattiness, uh, where we've got a strong start, we've got some scenes, we've got secrets and clues, we've got a bunch of fantastic locations, we have a cool map, we have a bunch of interesting NPCs. Uh, we have a whole pile of monsters that we can use, uh, and we have three uh, interesting pieces of treasure to award. So uh, that should really be enough. When we talk about like not over prepping, um, that is what we're talking about. I think the only one last tricky bit I, I'd like to have in my head is sort of the how does the um, uh, how does how do they how do the shadow fey grab them up? And I think. Their goal is to say, like, you can explore the castle, but please stay out of the east wing. That is where we shadow face stay, and we don't want people to go there. But they also know, like, you know, adventurers are idiots, and they go where you tell them not to, so maybe we'll jump them there. And then I think they're just waiting for their moment to kind of grab them. If they get separated, if they get separated at night, uh, I think they will, they will try to, uh, uh, like, cast spells on them, maybe cast sleep or something like that if they have it. Um... But I, I think I'm going to end up playing that by ear, like how the Shadow Fey try to grab the characters in order to drag them down to the vampire below. Uh, I think will um, I think we're going to play that by ear. So that is it. Uh, that is how I uh, build an adventure from scratch with with basically nothing. I know I cheated a little because I had some ideas in mind. I didn't sit here, but really, like sitting and watching me stare at the ceiling while I think up about you know snow hags is probably not the most interesting thing. And granted, this certainly took longer than like the fifteen or thirty minutes. I, I guess I. I don't know that I would expect somebody to be. A, I'm sure there are people who do it, but I don't know that I would expect somebody to be able to build an entire four hour adventure with no material at all, like not running any kind of published adventure at all in 15 minutes. I don't really, or, or 30 minutes. I, I think that you might be able to do it, but it'd be pretty hard. Uh, I think relying on random tables can help a lot. And um, you, certainly when you're not sitting and talking about it on Twitch, it, it's probably easier to do. Uh, but I do feel that um, the eight steps work work well to build an adventure from scratch. And uh, I don't know if you guys watching this uh, feel, yeah, crazy, crazy build TV says those tables are pretty awesome. I hope they are. We worked hard on them. This is all, by the way, from uh, the Lazy Dungeon Masters workbook, which you can buy right now. It's on Amazon. It's on RPG Now. It's on my website. Uh, I love it. I use it all the time. I've got my copy right here. Um, you know, keep, keep, it, keep it with me while I'm running a game. Uh, the other thing is I just published another video where I go through the whole book from top to bottom. It's a 40 minute video where I go through every, uh, every section of this book. So if you want to see what's in the Lazy Dungeon Master's workbook and whether it's worth your money, you can watch that video where I go through every single section and show you everything that's in it and give a little bit of tips and tricks for how to make the most out of the book. So you can watch that as well. So I hope you enjoyed today's show. Uh, I will be back again tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to go through my regular Sunday Ghosts of Saltmarsh game. And uh, we will see you then. So have a great day and uh, hope you get a chance to go play some D&D. &D. Thank you all very much.